And when, when you invest in training, it's not a one-time thing. Um, you're no. constantly investing in training. How, how often would you say Cody Askins is investing in training or I, I've got to have some type of some type of investment every month in some way. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe maybe multiple investments a month. Like I, I try to go to conference events, conferences, retreats. Like I pay to go to a lot of events throughout the year that I'm not even speaking at, any, you know. And and I do that. Like I went to a conference um, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a couple of years ago, and sat front row. I wasn't asked to speak. Later, the guy's like, "I should have had you speak." Well, that's right. Maybe next year, right? I was front row, stood clapped for every speaker no one else was standing up and i'm like what is wrong with people so i'm like i'm gonna sit on the front row i'm gonna set the example mm-hmm. and the guy the, the leader of the conference actually came to me after and said uh my staff was most impressed by how you showed up and led from the front and responded and we should have had you a part of the event he's like now if we would have nobody maybe would have stood so maybe we shouldn't have, <laughs> but, but they, it was like i would you know like i would get excited for every speaker that was coming out and, and ending yeah. and all that and then the rest of the audience would respond, and that was uh, it was cool. I was just being me. I didn't. I wasn't even thinking. You know, like like you. Mm-hmm. If you'd have been there. You'd have been there. Like you'd yeah. have done the same thing. Yeah. And it was just it was just cool to see. You know. So I love going to events. Something about there's a power in an event. You talked about it. Yeah. You used to go to events every single month back in the day. Yes. Yes. Eight hundred years ago, like that is incredible. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, 800 hilarious. years ago. <laughs> that would be 832, young sir. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, they were life-changing for me. I mean, uh, and here's the cool thing about when you invest in something like that and, and you go to an event. Now a lot of them are virtual, so you can access them virtually. Yes. And this one coming up on March 5th, 6th is going to be a, a virtual deal. I love how you, you're turning your mug to get... If, if you haven't checked this out, there's a little Easter egg right here. <laughs> on the video. On the yeah, video. I just pointed out the Easter egg, so that took it away, didn't it? Uh, there it goes. Uh, okay. Okay, let's get rid of the copy. Uh, so you're, you're like the dad that's like walking his kid through the the Easter egg patch, and you're like, "Oh, is that what's underneath that leaf?" <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right, that's right. Because I'm the guy who wants him to pick up the best, and one. then I'm running behind and stealing it. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, I mean, the best thing for me that I found about going to an event and investing and being there, being present, showing up, is the conversations that happen between the uh, between the sessions. Yeah, around the sessions, before yeah. the sessions, after the sessions, the dinner. I mean, like the connection time. When we started planning our recent conference, uh, Ignite, we were like very intentional. Okay, where are the connection points in mm-hmm. this conference? How do we get people to engage with each other, and mm. how do we also leave the time for them to mm. engage with others outside? Um, and Cody, that's a great part of you know your eight percent is you have that time um, and we met quite a few people there even at this event um the amount of breaks you know we're, we're taking that away from this event of like we need to have more breaks so there's more interactions more collisions because uh, during the break of this event i met three listeners of this podcast from new york and pennsylvania yeah, <laughs> like which is really cool that's so surreal it's so to, cool to meet people so Invest in yourself, invest in training, yep. go to the events, invest in the events, and and, and grow your business. What you're going to take away yeah. is going to make you the best salesperson on the planet. That's right. Boom, period, ever. And what you guys are doing, too, is uh, tip number three is maximize your opportunities. You guys are maximizing opportunities. Your, your transitions are impeccable. You like that? <laughs> smooth. Is smooth. Come on now. Yeah, smooth. Uh, well, when you, yeah, when, when you do it five years and 47 days. I, I said 46 days yesterday for you, too. I don't know if it's been... I don't know exactly, but... Yeah, you, you, you learn how to transition a little bit. That's important yeah. in a salesperson, too, is the yeah. transitional piece. Like, you can't make it awkward. Like, okay, Miss Betty, now we're done warming up. Now, <laughs> we're moving to asking you some questions. Like, who does that, right? Do, do we need to take a five-minute bathroom break real quick? Yes, I'm in. I'm in. You guys are maximizing opportunities because you're showing up. You're spending, we're spending time together. You're doing a podcast with, with myself. You're going to podcast with Coach Burt. Like, you guys are maximizing. You have, you know, flipping millions of dollars of equipment. Who knows what's going on in here? But you guys are maximizing the opportunities given, man. That's why I respect the heck out of it, and I love it. Mm. How can agents maximize their opportunities? What's what's some areas for them to make the most of their opportunities, and what are those opportunities even? Yeah, I mean, the opportunities is every time you get a chance to a lead, someone to talk to, like maximizing your effort and getting in front of Like I always teach, there's three ways. Like everybody wants to make 100 grand. Well, there's only three reasons why someone wouldn't make 100 grand. Number one is skill. Maybe they don't have enough skill. Maybe you're not good enough. I don't know. Revert to tip two, invest in training. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? Knowledge. 
most people don't maybe maybe you're not smart enough maybe you don't have the knowledge maybe you don't know what roger does or you don't know you know you have the it amazing and impeccable background like austin does who knows right mm-hmm. and again then, invest in training point that's, two that's right <laughs> and then three is is a big e word right effort yeah if you think about it effort to choice it's an option anyone can do it also skill if we want to be as good as roger is it sells we could put in the effort to have the skill to level up we want to know what austin knows boom we could choose to do it over time. We could know almost as much as what you know. A lot of YouTube. Yes, there we go. You put in the effort <laughs> to level up. Exactly. It all ties back to the effort piece. And so maximize the opportunities from an effort standpoint, like getting in front of leads, asking for referrals, maximizing the opportunities of events that you can go to, maximizing the opportunities of leveling up, right? And starting to think about this whole thing differently. Like I believe, I know that only 4% of companies in the U.S. earn seven figures a year. I'm telling you, every single person listening to this podcast can build a seven-figure business because there's more millionaires, seven-figure earners in our industry than any other industry in the world. Wow. Sorry, real estate. That means you're in the right place. You're in the right vehicle. If you're listening, you're like, well, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. Keep moving forward. Well, there's there's a there's an interesting um, before we go to go to the next point. <laughs> I just I, gave it away. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. Incredible. He, he transitioned. Before we go, I want to let you guys know there's there's an opportunity. Cody, you just pointed something out. You're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to. I don't know how yeah. to move forward. Um, like when you guys, Cody, your 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 other company, Secure Agent uh, Marketing, marketing, yeah. Um, does lead gen marketing for agents, websites, uh, SEO, websites, videos, yep. all that kind of stuff. And, you know, one of the things that agents are constantly trying to justify or trying to cut down is their investment in leads, right? Yes. Like, you got to give yourself as many opportunities as you can. When I first got in the business, I bought uh, 40 aged leads. I think I told you this story. 40 yeah. aged leads. It was in uh, McCreary County, Kentucky, southern Kentucky, in the hills. There was, like, two little hotels. One of them burnt down. They never built it back. There was The other one had 27 rooms. I, I stayed there. And when I get there, I pull out these leads, and I realize they're all P.O. box leads. Mm. None of them have addresses. Right? Oh my so you went home. So I'm like, I can't no. see anybody, and I'll, half of them don't have phone numbers. I want to ask the audience right now, you're Roger. What do you do? Okay, He's going to tell us what he did, but I'm curious. You, you listened, and what would you do in that moment? I like this audience. Yeah, engagement, Cody. So you're presented with a dilemma. So here's my naivety was like, I'm going to go down there and figure this out Yeah, because that's just the way I think. I think I'll figure it out. We'll just do it and we'll start. I mean, Austin, you know me well enough for that. Like, let's just start. And we'll figure this out. Like, hold oh, on, we God. need to have a little plan, right? <laughs> and uh, so I'm glad I got people like Austin in my life. However, me on my own, I'm just like, let's just run and we'll figure it out. Oh yeah. crap, we just ran into a lake. Yeah. You know, uh, so, but anyway, I'm down in McCreary County, Kentucky. I'm at this. I'm, I'm I'm pulling out my leads. I haven't got them routed. I don't know about routing yet. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. I'm pulling them all out. I can't see it. There's phone numbers. There's no one's answering the phone. There's P.O. boxes. I'm like, how am I going to figure this out? And I thought, well, all these people have a P.O. box address, and there's got to be a post office in town. So mm. I drove around, and all these these there were so many little towns. And I drove to this little post office that was smaller than the size of this room. And I would have to talk to the postmaster in there. And uh, I would show him my little lanyard, you know, that I had made for, you know, senior benefits, final expense, whatever, with my picture on it, my state license number. And we all use those. Yeah. Um, and I said, listen, Mr. Robert Jones, you know, filled out this card and all I've got is a P.O. box and he's not answering the phone and I'm supposed to get him this information. Can you help me? Well, we're not really supposed to do that. And I said, I don't know how to. I don't know how to help him, right? He wants, you can clearly see, yes, I see it. Well, he's actually, if you go down Snake Lick Road and up around and down over the creek past the big tree that got hit by lightning. It's Jump the one, on the horse. Yeah, it's the, it's the house <laughs> up behind the one that you see from the road, but there's another one up there in the back. That's where it is. And so we did this, and all week, this is what I had to do. I had to go to these little post offices and figure out where these people lived. The end of that week, you know, I was, I was down there for three and a half days because that's what I had scheduled because I had family and, and I had some other things that I had to do, but... Um, I think I wrote like twenty eight hundred and eighty bucks. Yeah, twenty eight hundred and eighty bucks. I'll two year old leads, PO boxes. I came home, Rose said, So what do you think? Is this gonna work? I said, Not this way. We gotta figure <laughs> we gotta figure out a more efficient way than this. Can't do this forever. Yeah, but I said, I, I think we're on to something here. These people definitely need something. These this, there's definitely a market here. If I can figure out how to to tap this thing and then yeah. create a system around it, we can scale this up into a viable business and and do something great. And 
You know, so you got to lean into opportunities. Another thing that I will I will leave you with before I know you got a couple other good points to give us is that I decided I was never going to pay for leads. Mm. A lot of people try to justify lead costs, and I just decided I'm not paying for leads. There's someone on this stack of leads. They know somebody else whose name is not on the leads, and I'm going to sell that person a policy, and that policy called a referral is going to cover my lead cost. And so every week, my my number one priority is who's the referral that I'm going to write that's going to cover my lead cost. I was only in the business for about three or four weeks before I made that decision. From that point on, I never paid for leads. So all my leads were free because there's opportunities in the leads. You just got to work them. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Well, so on today's show, the five tips to become the best salesperson ever on planet Earth, period, boom. Yeah. There you go. Let's do that. Come on now. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. What do you got for us, Cody? Let's do it. Well, thank you guys for having me, man. I, I love the show. Love you guys. Love. We've been hanging out the last few days, and it's been unbelievable.